I've got this piece of 1050 medium carbon and I've already cut a little bit out to form a tang there and I'd like to use this piece to try out a set of dies that I'd like to make, a set of dies I'd like to revisit which is uh, blade hollow bevel dies. This piece is pretty thick, 3 8 inch, and so I reckon that I need a recess on at least half of this die set. And then I'll need a bellied taper on each die in front of where that recess is. I don't have any precision tools for stock removal or for grinding, and so my thought is if I can hammer something close to a final shape, and then thereby reduce the, the amount of grinding I need to do, then I can also uh, do away with needing those precision tools. This piece is probably a lot thicker than what I would use for a blade, but it's a good starting point. I don't think I want to remove that much, so I'll erase that and then redraw some finer lines. It's better to start off being more conservative, and then if I need to remove more later I can do that. I need to thank Brooks Martin and Dawn Teske for their recent very generous donations. I also need to thank Tim O'Connor for increasing his Patreon support. Thanks very much. So my idea is to use those dies to create this sort of a shape, a hollow bevel. So this is my vice guillotine, uh, but this is pretty loud to use in my vice, and it's Chinese New Year right now, so I want to be a little bit more quiet. So I've got this older, hardy prototype version here. It's kind of wonky, kind of falling apart, but I'll use this to at least start it off. I need to make a new version hardy hole guillotine, or what I now call fullering tool, for myself. I'm always the last one. I heat treated the dyes. Being open top and bottom, this tongue is less than ideal for holding on edge. I switched to this tongue my Taiwan friend gave me.
you can see it's starting to look like a straight razor. That's not necessarily my intention, I just want to try the blade hollow bevel dies. I know that that concave I formed on the edge side will eventually straighten out and probably will reverse and probably become pretty uh, convex. But this step should help reduce that a little bit. thinking to use this piece of 3 8 as a spacer. I reverse the dies just to help me to try to be a little bit more consistent. There were two heats that I didn't show. Uh, these dies are working exactly as I planned. Uh, it would be perfect if this stock was about half the size that it is, but I'll follow through with it no matter. That hardy fullering tool, which was an old prototype, is just about had it. So I switched to this vice version just for the final heat. I'm going to make myself a new hardy fullering tool in the next couple of days. So the edge is obviously a lot thicker than it should be but to this point the dies have worked very well and I won't alter the dies until I use stock that's maybe about half this thickness. The line between the spine and the blade hollow has been delineated very well and it makes it very easy for me to follow with my angle grinder. So I can imagine the amount of grinding that I saved myself by working this piece in the blade hollow bevel dies for just a few heats. So these dies have obvious limitations. However, they're far superior than if I was to hand hammer this. It's very nice to be able to work both sides simultaneously and also to create that line. If I was to continue to use this thickness of stock, I would remove a little bit more material on either die right at that point. I'll definitely do another update on this. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.